Uh, welcome back to Euro CIS. Hive of activity here. Day one is well underway. And as you can see from the people behind us, there's a lot of attention on the Fujitsu stand. Euro CIS, it's the leading trade fair for retail technology. This year is a record year for the organizers. Uh, exhibitors have come from over 37 countries. Now, with me to talk, in fact, this interview, if you're a marketer or a boardroom executive, this one is for you. We're talking retention and loyalty loop and customer acquisition, everything that the modern retail business needs to um, succeed on if they're to have a long-term viable solution. With me to discuss this, we've got Brian James from Citrix. Thank you for sticking around. Um, Glenn Koskella, CCO from Fujitsu. And then joining us from Cudini, Jack Morgan. I know you're going to be taking us through some interesting stats shortly. Absolutely. Glenn, let's start with you. Loyalty, retention, the marketer in me, yeah. thinking of the funnel and how we top the funnel up and get more inquiries coming into the business and then how we foster that loyalty loop. Retailers are, are all fighting hard to achieve strong loyalty loops, aren't they? Yeah, they are. I mean, there's a lot that you can do with technology to improve your position where you are today. And, and there's no single, let's say, trick on it. You need to fight on multiple different grounds. You need to use technology to make sure that you have the right product, the right proposal. And you can do that in, let's say, pre-purchase. You can do that at, during the purchase. You can do it post-purchase. Second, you need to use technology to improve your customer experience, to make sure that the customers are delighted to come into your store. Then you can use the technology to improve your store performance, your operations over there, to match the requirements of speed, frictionless, that the consumers would expect. And the fourth item is learn to know your customers. Get that insight of who they are, how they are behaving, what are they buying, and how can you therefore improve your model. Let's talk supply chain. I know Amazon's done a lot for retail, whether you're an advocate or yeah. a detractor, but undeniably one of the big things that they've done for the retail industry is they've made us all have better supply chains, haven't they? If we're going to compete yeah, yeah. with an Amazon, we've got to have a world-class supply chain. They do. I mean, that's one of the store operations where the efficiency is needed. But it starts from visibility and it then goes into accuracy. And it, the accuracy is on multiple levels. It could be that you have an accurate level of information of what is in your shop. And then you go into what is in a given zone of your shop. Then you need to go to the level of what is in within a given shelf. Then you go to the level that the retailers are today mostly looking into how to have a visibility and accuracy on an item level. Now, that is the kind of a information you can then convert into customer experiences. You can convert that to more efficiencies like replenishment in the stores. You can do that with recommendation engines by pulling information from the product that the customers picking up and then recommending something else on it. So the demand focused world is completely different from the supply driven world of the retailers before and that requires that type of technologies. Jack, let's bring you in um, and let, let's talk performance of in-store technology. What are the technologies right now that um, are enabling things like queue management and how do these provide great customer experience because that's what it's all about right that's right and and before we start the main thing we want to look at is why this is such a big issue for retailers today um, we have found that retailers will lose 10 percent of their footfall due to in-store wait times and excessive yeah. wait times wow. and not only is that costing UK, uk british retailers 3.4 billion a year it actually means that 51 percent of their customer base has had an in-store experience ruined by the excessive wait times now, in the past, this might mean that their customers have lost their loyalty to the brand, but now with the way that Gen Z are going to complain, 21% of them are going to go online and complain via social medias. This means that it's going to be really damaging to a brand's reputation if they're not being switched on to these queues that they've got inside their stores. Um, we believe that the best way to counteract this is to focus head on, and there's two ways that brands are going to be able to do this. The first is by trying to make any wait times that we do have as pain-free as possible by introducing technologies such as virtual queue management, pre-booked appointments online, um, which means that customers don't really expect to be waiting in a physical queue that much anymore, and they're actually going to be free to browse the store. They're willing to wait a little bit longer, and actually they might make a few more purchases that they didn't intend to in the first place. The second way that they need to approach this is by shaving down those minutes that people will be waiting in general. 
Um, and the real focus that I think it's going to be is by aligning all of their omnichannel services under the same technology. Um, this is going to make the staff a lot more efficient and it's going to drive down those times. Now when we look at click and collect on its own, by 2023 global data I think that's going to reach nearly 10 billion and this alone is going to cause that urgency that brands really need to be ready to adapt. I hope the audio is coming through. It's a real hive of activity here right now with lots of interest around many of the technologies we're, we're discussing. So hopefully you're not being drowned out by the conversation going on behind us. I'm, Brian, I know we've spoken a bit today in a number of interviews. Technology is about unlocking the workforce. The, the cold face, the, the people on the shop floor, technology empowering our sales teams to do better jobs. That's what it's all about, right? Definitely. I mean, you know, they're a, such a valuable asset for the retailers. They are a, a direct human interface with the customer. Um, so what you need to do is to, to enable them to get those tasks done that they have to do, you know, the operational side of running a store, get that done as efficiently as possible. You know, really make the most out of their, you know, personas, their, their characters, their able, ability to interact with the customer and, and kind of guide them into, you know, more purchases or recommendations and that kind of thing. Um, and so, you know, with the advent of uh, the technology we have today, you know, we can put all of that information uh, that they need to do that job, you know, squarely in their hands, securely, uh, efficiently. Uh, and, and this generation of workforce that's coming in, they use to you know everything on demand click of a button I'm just gonna push the screen and it's gonna tell me what I need to do there's no reason why we can't deliver that and then use the remaining time um, to actually best serve the customers in the store I think I'm gonna preempt one of the comments we're gonna see on social so there's always a misconception that when we talk about these technologies it's replacing workforce and it's absolutely not about that at all is it it's not about that you know I mean the, you look at uh, simple things like how you uh, deal with a with a rotor at work you know you have to get staff on and off the, the floor you know how do you communicate that to people if there's last minute changes? You know, that's the sort of information that can be pushed to a device really quickly, really easily, inform the person. You know, that's not about um, manipulating their hours to, to a detriment, that's about enabling them to know where they need to be, when, get the job done, and then that gives them the bandwidth really to, get to, to talk and interact with customers. Glenn, I'm going to come to you with an unprompted question, so apologies. Are retailers embracing this enough or is there still conversations to, to be had? different traits of them. So there are some who have truly understood what the digital technologies mean into their store and retail model and have a very crisp and understandable view of where they are heading uh, and are at some part of that journey already. Then there are many who still believe that the old-fashioned way of I'm here with my store, I get the customers in with promotions would work and it doesn't. So creating a presence, creating promotions, is going to lose to online. So we see many retailers who have already very clear structured view of where they are heading. And they are investing in the technologies that help them to get there. But unfortunately, and you can see that in the newspapers as well, with some stores being closed, not everybody has got that yet. And this is probably the first dialogue that we have with our customers is to help them to digest all the phenomena that is ongoing, whether that would be in within their store operations or whether it would be in customer experience, what is possible by bringing in some new technologies and solutions to help it out, queue management, customer expectations, understanding that, helping them to kind of bring the data to the, to the wealth of the store associates. And then they know, okay, this is how we move forward. What is the role of my store against my online and begin to structure this omni-channel world for them? That's where it starts. We're just picking up on some of the stats that Jack shared with us. If you're not embracing digital, you're going to be missing out on some of those numeric opportunities. 2020, I think you said. 2023. 2023. If you've not got your digital transformation underway in retail, you really are missing out. If you've got any question for the three guys that we, we've spoken to this morning, drop us a note over social. We will connect you with them. There is still plenty more to come today from a really busy Euro CIS. Uh, if you've got any questions for any of the production team here or any of the, the, the people at Fujitsu, do share them with us. We will get them answered in an interview later today. More to come.